morning. It's Carolee Gurney and Stacy Reevely. And we are here on North Texas Networkers today and I'm excited about our guest. I'm excited about our guest, but yes. first of all, tell me how you've been doing, Stacy. I've been well, I've been a little bit busy. Uh, crazy time out there right now, but we're making the very best. I'll tell you what, it has been a crazy time, yep. but uh, we seem to be managing, still being able to find people homes, and of course, selling the homes has not been too much of an issue lately. Yep, that's <laughs> been an interesting thing, for sure. So, Well, today we have Mayor Harry Lorassi-Lear, and I am so excited to have him. We've actually been trying to schedule this for a while, and I uh, feel like it's we're just super excited to have him here today, and you know... Stacy's actually had an opportunity to work with Mayor Harry mm -hmm. before, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so when I was president of Junior League back in 2008, he was on my advisory board, and he was such a wealth of information and just had such great advice for all of us, and I just have never forgotten that and what a, just a true, genuine person he is. So I'm really excited that he's here with us today. Me too, and I know that this show... Um, Again, we know, we know it's not about, net, uh, about real estate, it's about networking and networking in the DFW area. So even though we said mayor, you might want to know what city we're talking about. We're talking <laughs> about Plano, Texas. And he has done wonderful things for Plano, Texas. He's brought great industries here. We'll ask him about that here in just a minute so we can find out a little bit more about how that happened. But we are glad to have Mayor Harry Larassilier here today. <laughs> and also, before we move on, I want to thank our sponsor, Craig Schrank with Willowbin Mortgage. Welcome, Harry. Well, thank you. Thank Mayor you for Harry. having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're glad you're here. So tell us just a little bit about yourself, about your family, and just who are you? Sure. sure. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm glad to hear you're selling homes. I hope it's in Plano, Texas, because that city of excellence, that's where all the home purchases should be. Uh, uh, we, of course. We, lo we love welcoming new people to our community. So I've uh, I moved here, moved to the to the Dallas, to the Plano actually in 1994. I came and followed uh, my now wife uh, who came out here to work for Frito-Lay. Uh -huh. I was uh, born in Haiti, grew up in uh, New York, upper west side of Manhattan. Most people know it as Harlem. And I came down here in 94 and our story was like very many people that are here in the, in the Metroplex. I thought I was going to be here for a couple years and we'd make our way back home. but. Once we had our first child, uh, our roots were cemented, and it's an incredible community, so we've never left. And so um, I have two daughters. Um, one of them graduated a couple years out of college, and uh, my other one uh, is at Colgate. So my money nice. and my daughter <laughs> goes to Colgate University. She's a junior there. And uh, I, when I got here in 1994, I got involved immediately in the community, so Plano, uh, and really just the surrounding area of Collin County is just a very welcoming community and mm -hmm. got involved in nonprofits. We met yeah. that's what, in, in yeah. 2008, Stacy, when we met, I was just finishing my second term on city council. I spent six years on city council. Um, and No, I'm sorry, I was finishing my first term on city council. I, and in 2013, I ran for mayor and became the first, first African-American mayor of the city. That's fantastic. That is. So before we move into some of your more specifics, tell us just how did you meet Tracy and end up? You know, we met, we <laughs> met through friends, and um, after she took the restraining order off me, uh, <laughs> uh, we, um, we, 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 we were dating, and we were actually friends for the longest. Uh, and then right before she came here uh, in 1992, we actually started dating. So it, it's kind of backwards. You know, often you meet someone, you mm -hmm. date, and then you become friends. But... We were friends for a very long time. And so she grew up in Harlem with you? No, she actually grew up in New Jersey on the East oh, Coast. So okay. we met back East. And, uh, you know, I followed my, 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 my passion of, in two ways, my heart in Tracy and then my love for community, which is what brought me to be a mayor. Well, I will tell you, your motto, I love. So the city keeps you safe. It protects you. Yes. The schools educate you. Yes. And the community nurtures you. Yeah, I, I call that the Plano promise, and I think it's something that was here before I became mayor, which is what makes Plano such a great community. I call it the Plano promise. It's really directed mostly to our youth because it's really about our future, and so I say the city will protect you. And, you know, we have, we're one of the safest cities in America every year. We're in the top five of the safest city. So this past year, we're th ranked third for cities over 250,000. The safest city, third safest city in America. Our schools will educate you. Um, Ninety-six percent of our kids graduate high school, and and our, our community will nurture you. If you if you think about all the wonderful programs we have, 
uh, and our corporate partners that really lean in on behalf of our kids, that's really what Plano is about and that's what makes our community so special. True. So what led you to want to come into public service? Because it's not a job for everybody. You, you, you're right, Stacey. <laughs> you, you, sometimes I wonder if it's a job for me. <laughs> um, so it really is a, was a calling. It was 1991. I decided I was going to be mayor in 1991. And <laughs> so where were you in 91? I was in New York. I was okay. living in New York. So I grew up in New York. I, knew, I moved here in 94, so I was in New York all my life since the age of four. And uh, David Dinkins was the mayor of New York at the time, first African-American mayor of the city. So as a young man, I was just paying more attention. There was a incident in Brooklyn that really created a, a big racial strife that really tore the city apart, and I remember it. The, the calling came to me and said, the, the role of a mayor is to be a unifier, and someday I will look to unify my city by just being a, a voice of, um, of compassion and a voice that brings people together. I didn't know my path would take me to Plano, but I, I'm glad it did. That's, well, that's awesome. awesome. Very good. That is really neat. So you've had many successes as mayor, and one of them is all the corporations that you have helped lead this direction. Tell us how how that happened. So yes, so we've had a number of big wins uh, in the past eight years. Uh, U.S. headquarters of Toyota that was four thousand jobs. Uh, Boeing, J.P. Morgan, twelfth regional headquarters over twelve thousand employees. Liberty Mutual, FedEx office, NTT Data, U.S. headquarters, and. It was really simple. The story was essentially what I told you. I, I can remember our conversation with to, the Toyota folks. Um, I told them, if you come here, if your, 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 your employees will love the community. And I just gave them the story I told you. I said, I thought I was going to be for three years. I fell in love with Plano. Again, it's not only the Plano story. It's really uh, the DFW and the Metroplex. So there's Plano, Frisco, Al, and McKinney, all the cities around us that really make us a wonderful community because we're not here on an island. And I, I was very genuine about that. And I think, and that was truly the, the decision, bec the deciding factor, because everyone was coming in and talking about economic incentives and, you know, why our city's better than others. And, and in the end, the money is, a, is, a, is just a small part of the decision. It's really about the company wanting the, their people to be in a place that they can relocate because imagine if they left California, Toyota for example, mm -hmm. 4,000 employees and only 1,000 showed up, they'd completely lose their culture. Mm -hmm. And they really, and that's important for many companies and uh, in Toyota's case 75% of their uh, employees ended up coming and staying in Plano or not in, in Plano and the surrounding areas. You know as realtors we really appreciate that. You remember that. that, that yeah, <laughs> Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> they, they were able to move from a little matchbox to three, to four thousand mansion. square foot <laughs> exactly. in, in, in the area for sure. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yes, Where's my thank commission? you. I know. I need to be part of the mayor post. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's get, 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 let's get a real, to real to, uh, <laughs> license for me. <laughs> it is amazing because I've moved here in '92, and the landscape of Plano has changed tremendously. Is that something that previous city councils had kind of planned for, and you got to kind of see that through execution, or is that something that changed along the way? That's a fantastic question, Stacey. One of the things I like to say about Plano is very few things happen by accident. We're extremely intentional about our, our uh, actions, both today and for the future. So I am the benefactor of a lot of people that came ahead of me that thought ahead and made decisions 10, 15 years ahead. And I can, I can remember some of the decisions I made on city council when I got on in 2005 that came to fruition when I was mayor. And so there was a lot of decisions ahead of time that created that. And so, you know, we were once a bedroom community in the 80s. Our population was about 80,000. Most people lived in Plano, worked in Dallas. Next couple of years, decades, we were known as a big suburb of Dallas. But now we're our own city. Right? We're, we're globally diverse. We're, uh, we're inclusive. Uh, we compete on the global stage for any business, any family and any individual looking for a place to call home, and that's because we've grown up. So our population now is just a shade under 300,000, about 290. We won't get any larger than that. We're landlocked, so there's minimal opportunities for residential growth. We still have some opportunities to bring some businesses It's down. funny. My, my husband has never lived anywhere else but Plano, nice. except when he went to college. And I remember 
coming to Plano in late, uh, probably 1989. And yep. we'd yep. never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't much here. And I went to my friend's house. And my husband used to hunt on the land that we've lived on. And it's really interesting because years go by. I've been in the community a long time now. And I went to an event at my church. And I ran into the mother of the girl that I had gone to see when I was in college. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So great to see you. I'm like, where do you live? Not five minutes from me. That's where I had been in Willow Bend. I had it, no idea. Where you used to hunt. <laughs> well, where I went to go yeah. to her house. Wow, it's in amazing. Willow Bend. Yes, I had no yes, idea that's yes. what it was. So that's funny. Kinda, kinda Willow Bend, that's one of our great neighborhoods. That, that's one of the ca great characteristics of Plano is you drive around Plano and there's a lot of different neighborhoods that have their own character. And, mm -hmm. and it's a, there's, there's diversity in Plano in so many ways in terms of our, our, pop, you know, our people, but in terms of our restaurants and and, and the and the neighborhoods as well, and you obviously know as a realtor, you, I'm I'm telling I'm <laughs> preaching to the cross choir here. So tell us what have been some of your biggest accomplishments, not only in the office but also personal life. What are so I've, my biggest accomplishment is obviously my 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 family. I have uh, two beautiful daughters. My one is 23. She's two years out of college. She went to University of San Diego. She works on, uh, in the D.C. area uh, in marketing and communications. And my junior, uh, she's at Colgate right now, and she's studying uh, po political science. Oh, so wow. if she gets into politics, she will completely outshine me. Knock she's it out the, of the better version of both me and my <laughs> wife, and then certainly in my family. And uh, and from a from a standpoint of community, uh, I. I you know, I'm proud of what we've done in Plano. When I became elected, the number one goal I had was, I said to our city manager, I want to shine the spotlight on our city and let everybody know how wonderful our community is. Not because I'm mayor, because this has been a great community before I came, but I was very focused on getting our, war, our name out. And now we are, we're known, we're recognized nationally as a premier city in America. We've served, I've served on the U.S. Conference of Mayors and chaired a number of prestigious uh, committees and, count, um, and and that gave us the exposure and the platform for people to realize that Plano is not just a small bedroom town. We're our own city and we have our own identity and I'm really proud of that. It's so much fun to see our, our city listed, you know, in different places across the country yes. and, uh, you know, you must feel so proud that you've gotten to have a special part of that. I do, thank you. Making that happen. So. I am sure that there are just things that people don't even realize that you do behind the scenes. Tell us a little bit about what the community around you has no idea that falls into your description of the yeah, job. It, it pretty much <laughs> it's kind of all the above. Any, any given day, you know, pandemic aside, on a, mm. when the world was, was right side up, a typical day for me can start off with me reading at, uh, at a third grade uh, class, um, meeting with a company that's thinking about coming to Plano, going to City Hall to discuss, uh, to have a council meeting and discuss zoning, zoning changes, uh, um, to, to, go, to then going to a ribbon cutting or, or, a, or a, uh, a function where you know, we, had to, we do the ceremonial stuff as myself and council, we're, you know, we're truly ambassadors of the city. So um, it, it, in between that, it could be uh, you know, I'm, I'm in Austin because we're in session and we're trying to make sure that legislation and, and rule, laws that are passed affect us the right way or don't affect us and try to stop bad things from happening, but you know, it, it, it could be a range of any different things that we do, and there's no, no days the same. Well, so, but if you're digging even deeper into that, what's the strangest call you've, you've received as a mayor that you might not have thought would ever come your way? Wow. There's a, there's a number of them. The best one, <laughs> the best one I could think about was um, uh, we had someone, a neighbor, someone complaining that in the neighborhood there was somebody who owned a... Uh, a chicken, and um, it, it turns out it was a rooster, and the rooster was, you know, going Rolling off in the morning, <laughs> and so we were, our animal service said, "Hey, look, we can't do anything about it unless you tell us where it is." And so at some point, this neighbor found out where it was, and we went to the person's house, and we 
said, you know, you can't have a chicken. In your you life. had to go to the person's house? No, not, not me. <laughs> I got but you the got call. the call. I got, they called me for everything. <laughs> Potholes, chickens, whatever it may be. And so the funny thing is the person who owned the rooster said, uh, they, we, said uh, we said, well, you have a rooster. It's making noise, you, and you're not allowed to have them. Uh, so you have to, you know, we're going to have to take it away. He goes, well, I was wondering why it wasn't laying any eggs. <gasps> but, oh, that's <laughs> too here, funny. Here's a funny story to, to, to wrap this up. There's actually legislation right now going on in Austin that mm -hmm. will allow chickens, chickens in the backyard. backyard so, it made it to the desk last year and it didn't get signed. Did, but how about like, roosters? Can the roosters no. be there too? Let's, let's, let's hope not. Have. Let's hope not. They're noisy. Uh, it, so it, it may actually happen now that you'll... I just, actually have a lot of people asking about backyard yeah, chickens. Yep, yep. Well, it I is. have a big Chickens thing. and we have uh, some, rabbits. We have some friends that have chickens and I went over there. I had no idea how much they're like pets. They let me yeah, hold the chicken yeah. and it actually, you know, was fine with me holding yeah <laughs> holding it yeah it's amazing yes. yeah that's funny <laughs> there, there's plenty of others but that's the first one that came to mind <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny so when you're done with the office what is the one thing that you really hope people remember about Mayor, Mayor Harry's Legacy. tenure, yeah. tenure. You, you know it, it I, I think what I'm most known for is economic development the, the job creation and and, and um, to me, that's a core, core function of a mayor is, is, is to create jobs because I, I believe job creation and employment creates the upward cycle of prosperity. This is a land of opportunity, America is, and Plano is, is, the, uh, is in the vanguard of that. So I, I'm truly proud of that. But what I'm most proud of is the work we've done with our youth. Since becoming mayor, we started a summer internship program. Mm called the Plano Mayor Summer Internship Program. Over 600 kids have graduated in, in our partnership with our school district. Um, rising juniors and seniors get to go to um, work in all those companies I talked about during the summer for eight weeks, paid internship. And what's most valuable about it is that they get real life work experience and 40, nearly 30 to 40% of the kids that youth that goes through the program are first generation college bound. So that means they don't have professional role models at home to teach them some of the soft skills that they're going to need to compete. They're getting a great education from PISD, but it takes more to be competitive in the workplace. And, uh, and, and then they have business contacts and networks. And I just was with a business owner just yesterday. And a great story, a young man who internship, interned with her now works for her. Oh, wow. So it, it's creating a, a, um, a pipeline for a workforce for our, our best and brightest who normally go off to college and never come back. To, to realize that plan is a place they can still call home. And selfishly, I'm hoping my daughter makes her way back here because there'll be plenty of jobs <laughs> for her to come here as well. That's, that's wonderful. That sounds like an awesome program for sure. Yeah, it, really, it really does. So how do you feel like you get to, to really affect during your tenure as a mayor? I mean, I know there's some things that have been built up, and especially in Plano, they've, they've had a long-term plan, but how do you feel about you personally getting to, to make some decisions that truly change community while you're in office? So that's, that's, one, that's really one of uh, my, the biggest challenges we have, I think, as a council is to, uh, is to be, and policymakers to be visionary, because you tend to hear from the people that look for things that matter for them today. So I need this here today, I need to, this done. But our true decision is to embrace the opportunity of our future and make decisions long term. And so, you know, we've worked quite a bit since I've become mayor. We've, we've uh, invested quite a bit in our infrastructure and our streets. And, and I know it's not kind of sexy and exciting to say I got a lot of roads built, but when you drive through Plano and you don't realize mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a 30 or 40 year old road that you're on, to me that's a success because you're kind of going about your day and you're used to things and um, you know, investing to build, to upgrade our, our recreational centers and facilities for our police and firefighters and so that they can still be the best trained and be best prepared. All those things are the things I know that we've worked on long term and then, and then really making decisions strategically to be, who, who do we want to be in the next 10, 15 years? And like I said, I remember when I was on city council, the decisions I made that I, myself and my council members made, mayors and councilmen made before me, that I became a benefactor of, and I'm very cognizant of that. And, and, and
and think about that for the future. So I'm just going to uh, stop off ahead. of that. I mean, you may have wanted to ask the same question. Probably. What do you see <laughs> 10 to 15 years That's from exactly now? That's exactly my question. question. Let's say I should have let you ask. You know, so, so <laughs> I really want to make sure it was that asked. Y'all got shot in the brain? Or, or well, I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That really strange, actually. Strange. So for the future, the future of Plano is that, um, so it, it's interesting. When I, when I fir my first, um, first interview as mayor, uh, my question was, the question was, what is my vision for Plano? And I said, my vision for Plano is for it to stay the same. And what I meant by that is, to the core, I want us to be who we are. We're a community that cares. We're a community of compassion. We're a community that, um, that provides opportunity and, 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 and embraces those that are here to really be part of what we have going on. But what it means, but we will also evolve. We're not going to look the same. The landscape will be different. Um, there'll be there's pockets of, of of density which I call job enhancing residential units. So most people call apartments, but it's more like uh, areas like in Legacy West mm -hmm. where you can live, work, and play, and not have to get in your car to go to to go to work and drive up and down the tollway. Uh, we're going to have a lot more innovation because of. Um, because of the pandemic, I think if it's, it's accelerated what we perceive to happen where, for example, rather than going to, into City Hall to take care of, if you're a business owner to, and you're, you're planning to build, you don't have to go to the planning department with, the, with all these big pay sheets and, and plats. You'll be able to do it online. There'll be a virtual on, uh, City Hall. We have a Fix-It app right now where if you're driving in your neighborhood and there's a a light post that's down, or a, or a broken median, or something like that. You could pull over. I you, didn't even know that. You, call, you fix it up. You <laughs> okay. go, you go there, and on your on your smartphone, you say, you take a picture. You say it's the corner of Park and Preston, mm -hmm. um, and 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 then you send it in. Then you will get a a a uh, notice from us to say we've received it. We've ordered the um, the material. It's going to be here in three weeks. Three weeks, it's here. We've completed the job. It's, the job is completed. I mean, that's the that's the level of touches that we will have, and that's Huge. available right now. And it's just going to elevate more in the future. Probably uh, flying cars. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I know. I keep like hearing U this. Uber I elevate. Know. Uber yeah. elevate will probably it's be in here in Plano up. in the next decade, where you can be, land in um, in uh, in DFW and, and get on a. Uh, 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 basically a drone and get to Plano about 15 minutes in the middle of rush hour and uh, unless and everybody's in the drones it's it's in the drone. <laughs> then we got congestion up there but then, then you can drive because there'll be nobody in the, in, in, in the highway in the traffic uh, and, and by, the t by the time scale comes I'll be about the cost of taking a black car from mm, the airport because you can get about three or four pe three to five people as the projection so all those things are on the plate and, and our future is is boundless and again it's embracing the opportunity of our future it's the the decision we make today to say we're willing to be the city of the future and we make the decisions today for what comes down the line wow you know, I want you to share what you shared with me earlier. I mean, I, I was hearing yesterday, and you probably know the statistic. I don't know the statistic, but that Plano is one of the most diversified cities across the country. Yes. Yes. So in terms oh, of demographics, 43% uh, <laughs> non-Caucasian. Um, we we're 8% African-American, 15% uh, Latino, 15 16%, about 18 19% Asian. In our school districts, it's 60% non-Caucasian. And there's 80, over 80 native languages spoken in the homes of our students. And all wow. that makes is adds to the richness of our community, mm. and which makes us special, for sure. What I shared with Carol Lee was when we were, when you served on the advisory board, the Junior League at that time was looking at diversity and, and making sure that we were doing things the way we needed to, and we were asking for advice about that. And your advice was, and I remember this so clearly, to not go out looking to bring in diverse people, but rather define your values and the right people will come to you. Right. And those right people will come, come out from all walks of life. And it was such yes. great advice. Yeah. So. Thank you. <laughs> I remember well, that. Well, that was pretty good you. advice. It was really good, wasn't it? <laughs> was so good. Little, she remembers it. I wonder what like, I said. What did I say eight years ago, 12 <laughs> years ago? That's pretty good. I have no. moments of clarity every now and then. <laughs> So that's what the Thank Junior you. League Thank did. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> for sure. So what's what's life like after office? What are you going to 
keep well, busy with. Well, my, my beautiful wife and I will spend some time together, I think, for the next, uh, for the remainder of the year. She's, uh, she's forbidden me to accept any, any, any roles. <laughs> that's and, why we had to do this yeah, before that's you were out. I told you. Didn't, I, <laughs> okay. didn't I say you got till May 10th? Yep. That's yes. my last day. Uh, we got till May 10th, and um, I'm going to just slow, slow the pace down a little bit in addition to being mayor. Most people don't know mayor. The mayor is not a, a paid position, not, mm -hmm. although it's a full-time job. Um, I'm, I have a wealth, I'm a wealth manager with UBS, and so that's a full-time gig practice. And <laughs> I'm fortunate I have a great team back uh, at the office that allows me to go out and, 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 and serve my community. So I always said I've had two jobs. I was a... Uh, one, one paid me real income, one paid me spiritual income, and that's what the mayor's job does. Is, and my life's a three-legged stool. It's my work, my family, and my community. And so I think for the remainder of this year, I'm going to focus on my family a little bit, and then we'll figure out what's next. I know whatever I do will be involved with helping youth and creating opportunity and mentorship because that's what it brought me the most joy, mm -hmm. our summer internship program and some work we did with the North Texas Food Bank fe feeding our hungry yeah, kids. Yeah, that was a big thing yeah. to bring North Texas Food Bank into Collin County. Yeah, that we was had a we had a um, accomplishment. We had a backpack program where we where we fed our um, we fed uh, our hungry uh, food insecure kids in our elementary school. Do you think there was a perception that there weren't hungry kids in Collin County? Yes, yes. So one out of five children in Collin County is food insecure, which mm -hmm. means they're not sure where their next meal is coming from. So Typically during the week, they have breakfast and lunch served in school. They're on food, you know, food assistance. And then on Friday, they leave, and they're not sure when or what they're going to eat over the weekend. And so uh, it's not only Plano, it's really it's all of Collin County. And we, we were able to, to, to serve those kids, and we continue to do so, even more so now with I used, I used to work year. with Boys and Girls Clubs years ago, and we discovered the same thing, exactly what you were saying, mm -hmm. that... Uh, People just have a perception, since Collin County is one of the most affluent, most affluent counties, yes. uh, that, that people aren't hungry. Well, we're a microcosm are. of the United States. We have a lot up here and we have a lot down here. And so our goal is not to bring down the top, but to raise the, those lower and, 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 bring, and fill the gap. And so you give a child a chance, you know, how will a child learn? if he or she is hungry mm -hmm. and, and thinking about the meals. And so we want to make sure that they can go in and, 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 um, and learn. And education, to me, I call, I call that the great equalizer. If you get a good education, then you have an opportunity. And what I tell my kids in our, our summer program, is um, internship program, is our job is to get you in the room. Education opens the door, gets you in the room. What you do in, when you get in the room is on you. You got to compete, you got to be prepared, you got to bring your best, your A game every day, and that's, that's, that's what brings the best out of you. But our job is to give them that opportunity and open that door for them. And that's what that's education really cool. does. We have about a minute left, and something that Stacy and I always like to ask. Yeah? If you could do anything and just erase your skills and what you have, but you could pick anything to go back and do over again or to be, to become, aside what you've done, what might that be? Wow. Well, yes, yeah, tough question. You know, you smile and you think it's tough, <laughs> but this is very hard hitting. I got, I got to say, um, really, I, I can't imagine I'd do anything different. I guess it's the same way of saying is that what would I tell my younger self? I, uh, I'm living a life of passion. My of passion. I, I have a. Um, a wife that I, I married over my head. I'm still faking it, and I, I don't want her to realize I'm <laughs> over my head. So maybe marry my wife sooner, be, become mayor sooner, and, and start my family sooner. I, I, I love everything I do. My, my work, I get to help people financially. My, my daughters are the love of my life. My, my, my wife, uh, she's, she always told, you know, when I thought I gave my best, she used to tell me, you know, there's more in you, and she's the one that brought the oh. best out of me. So... I don't see myself doing anything different, but maybe doing it sooner. How's there that? That means you're doing exactly what you were yeah, created I'm to do. Yeah, I'm living the life I was meant to live. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's a great feeling. Fantastic. Thank you. This has been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. This oh my is gosh, so fun. yeah, always yeah. getting to visit for a little while today, and we wish you nothing but the best in life after May the 10th. And keep selling homes in Plano. <laughs> we will. We definitely will. Plano, the city of excellence. <laughs> Well, thank you so much thank for you. being here. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us today. We're so happy to have you here with us. I'm Carol Lee. I'm Stacy, and, and we, we are, are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals.
thank you for joining us on North Texas Networkers. Visit our website, mariposagroupdfw.com. That's M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A Group dfw.com for more information about the show and other resources. I'm Carolee. And I'm Stacy, And, and we, we are, are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals.